Welcome to the Perspectives on Healthcare podcast, where members of the medical community from different roles, venues, and locations share their unique perspectives on quality healthcare, its future, and how to improve it. Now, from the Your Keynote Speaker Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, here is your host, Rob Oliver. Thank you, and welcome to Perspectives on Healthcare. I'm just... I have to tell you, I am super excited about my guest today, and here's why. She's someone who literally knew me way back when. Uh, My guest today is Carol Ann Davidson. She is a physical therapist as well as a wellness and yoga instructor, Uh, but here's the backstory on this. Carol Ann was my physical therapist when I was in rehab immediately following my spinal cord injury. So she was very, very young at the time and she has not aged at all. She is still just as young and amazing as I remember her way back. I won't say how many years ago. Uh, Carol Ann, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a joy when you reached out. I hadn't heard from you in so many years and it's great to see you and reconnect. Yep. So just, just by way of introduction, I will say that you are a member of Generation X like I am, and you are coming to us today from out in the state of Washington. So let's kind of jump in here. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your role in healthcare, please. So as you mentioned, I'm a physical therapist, and I've worked in a lot of different settings over the years. I've been a therapist for almost 30 years, and uh, I guess it has been 30 years. And for a while, I stayed home with my kids after working for about 20 or 25 years and was a stay-at-home mom. And then when I decided to re-engage back in work, I um, have always loved yoga and I went to get my yoga teacher training and decided to integrate physical therapy and yoga and kind of move towards the wellness um, aspect. Okay. So how do those two kind of meld together for you? Is it a is it a, an easy fit or is it something that, um, because listen, I'm, I'm going to show my bias here. Okay. Sometimes physical therapy seems to me to be very numbers oriented and it's all measurements and calculations and, um, everything needs to have a, a number associated with it. And yoga doesn't quite seem to be that way. So can you comment about like how those two work together? Sure. Um, well, I guess uh, in my years of doing physical therapy, I was mostly worked in rehab hospitals or in hospitals in acute care and um, started back in the 90s when the numbers weren't so important. I, I really think that numbers over time have gotten more important because of insurance companies really requiring, you know, showing progress in a numerical way. And um, so that wasn't as much of a focus years ago. I mean, of course we needed to progress people, but, you know, documenting it in that way wasn't so important. Um, and I guess I've just really moved towards wellness. I decided to go towards that route because I, I've always loved yoga just for my own practice. I really like that it addresses the physical body the you know, I always feel good, you know, spiritually and, um, emotionally afterwards, just the whole being, you know, mindfulness, And I saw over time when I worked in rehab that people didn't really have a place to go once they were discharged from rehab to kind of maintain that wellness. So, you know, you don't see people in wheelchairs or who have injuries that often, uh, you know, more significant disabilities in gyms, for example, you know, to go to a gym and work out. And I just felt like there wasn't a place for people to, who might be nervous about injuring themselves um, just to continue that process of therapy. You know, you, you get discharged after six or eight weeks, and but you still need to maintain your body and stay physically fit. So I just saw yoga as an avenue to do that. And, um, and so really my focus now with the yoga and wellness is working with people. It's either adaptive yoga or seniors who might have some injuries and just feel like I need some someone who knows my body and knows what's going on with me to guide me through how to do this safely and benefit from it. Got it. What does quality healthcare mean to you? So 
I, I had to, I thought a lot about this quality healthcare for me has always really been engaging with people on an individual level. It's one of the reasons why I decided to do physical therapy was because I could spend more time with people than I know doctors have these limitations on how long they can spend with people. It's a much quicker turnaround. So it's really getting to know people and getting to know their goals, listening to them, um, understanding the context of uh, their lives. I did home care for a long time, which will I'll kind of get into in a minute, but um, I really liked working with people in their environments where I could see what their needs were. Um, so deeply listening to people and understanding their goals and not imposing your own goals on on people. I think that's really important. Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting to hear you say that because so often people look at medical professionals and kind of say, they come to the medical professional to say, okay, what should I do? Or, you know, you tell me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of switching that around to say, you, you tell me what you want to do. You set the goals and then we work together to accomplish those. That's a, that's a really cool thing. Can you, can you give me an example of quality healthcare? Yeah. Um, so for many years, I worked with an organization called Rehab Without Walls, and it's not located in the, north, in the Northeast right now, um, sadly, but it's, it's in the West. I worked for them in California and also here in Washington. And it's a home and community reintegration model. So we worked with people mostly with neurologic disabilities, um, but we worked in the home and then also we took them out in the community. So there were teams of therapists that worked together, usually PT, OT, sometimes speech. Um, they were individually case managed and we took people wherever they needed to go to work on their goals. So, for example, if somebody had a brain injury and had trouble with concentration or visual issues like scanning the environment, the OT and I would do a co-treatment to the grocery store. And I would work on walking up the curb, you know, getting the cart, walking through the grocery store, and the OT would, you know, work for scanning for certain items, making sure the person, you know, cognitively could check their list and manage checkout and money and the math. And it was just this really integrated work right where it needed to be for somebody's life. And that was, I worked for them for a very long time in different places, and I just thought it was a wonderful model. Yeah. Yeah. And... Talk to me a little bit about this because what you're doing is you're moving people out of the hospital environment, out of the medical environment, and moving them into their world and into the real world. And that, uh, that's got to be a, a very fulfilling thing because you're not, it's not academic, it's not theoretical, it's very practical in the nature of what you're doing. Does, is that resonating with you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I thought back to years when I worked in rehab, like when I worked with you and we had these, you know, mats that we worked on in the gym. And, you know, that's not and then you go to somebody's home and their bed is in the corner and they have their nightstand there and they have a dog to maneuver over and, you know, clothes on the floor or like a really tiny doorway. And and then their car. I remember spending a lot of time working with you trying to get you in and out of the car because you're so tall. Right. Um, just how to, you know manage people in their own environment is just so different than working in a hospital. It totally opened my eyes to the barriers that people have to deal with in the real world. Sure. But it's funny that you say that because I remember actually being uh, in rehab and I don't remember if it was, if the OT and PT worked together on this or not, but I remember the first time that I got to take a power wheelchair out into the community and I went to Wawa and I bought, a, you know, a pint of ice cream and it was just it, the, the understanding that like, I am, you know, I'm able to get out there and I'm able to do all of the things that I needed to, um, is really empowering, especially for someone who was recently injured, um, or recently acquired a disability at, and they're seeing, they begin to see the possibilities because initially most of what is in front of you is the, the, the deficit. So that's phenomenal work. Um, what do you wish that people understood about your role in healthcare? And you can take that from physical therapy, from yoga, wellness, uh, or any combination of those that you so choose. 
That could be a rather long answer. My immediate reaction when I heard this question or read this question was kind of like, well, most people hear I'm a PT and they immediately talk to me about back pain or something that they have like that. And that wasn't the kind of physical therapy I did. So I guess the first thing is really understanding how broad physical therapy is. You know, most people think of it as orthopedic injuries, you know, a shoulder injury or like I said, back pain. Um, and our expertise in movement science and body mechanics and preventing injury. So, you know, that I would like people to understand. Um, as far as yoga, uh, you know, a lot of people view yoga as um, something just for the 20 year old, super flexible, bendy kind of person, or also view it as a, a religion. And, you know, it's really neither. So, you know, the yoga that I do is really about, um, you know, anybody can do yoga. I mean, yoga can just be even breath practices, really, to just, you know, work on breath work and meditation or, um, you can do yoga in bed, you know, with certain stretches and strengthening and for posture. So I just feel like it's much broader than thinking about it, you know, coming into a pretzel shape. Right. But, <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting to hear you say that because um, I have a friend of mine who is recovering from COVID and breathing exercises and even just uh, mindfulness in breathing uh, for him are something that, that he's got to work on. And I didn't realize that that is something that's covered in the in the yoga practices that would be beneficial to him. So, a recommendation I will have to make. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, tell me what excites you about the future of healthcare. Um, this the focus on wellness really that you know there is more focus than there used to be on wellness and prevention um, and avenues where people really. Uh, they have a lot more choices as far as that goes, and it's more mainstream. So uh, complementary practices like acupuncture, massage, um, meditation classes, mindfulness, um, yeah, breathing practices, all of that I think really can help someone's recovery. And um, so that does excite me. I mean, even Medicare now, you know, there's classes that are covered under Medicare under the Silver Sneakers program. And so... Um, so yeah, I really, I see that as exciting in healthcare. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's really an expansion of where medicine has been. It, it was that medicine is looking at diagnosis codes and treatment plans. And um, in some ways you're, you're looking to, you know, to address symptoms. To move to that preventative medicine model is is really unique and different. Can, can you just talk about that a little bit, if you don't mind? Well, um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, first of all, I think, sadly, it's largely, maybe not largely, but it is driven by insurance companies. And that is something else I wanted to say about when you asked me something you, I wish people understood. Um, I think that so many... So many of us who went into healthcare really want to help our patients. And some of the challenges with healthcare, when I hear other people complain about it, I feel are more related to the system than people who really want to help. I, I view that most people that choose to go into healthcare really truly in their hearts do want to help people. And it's just the sad state of the system. But I do think, just to get back to your wellness thing, I think that people have recognized that spending money you know, and um, helping people to go to exercise classes or have these other avenues to stay well before they get injured actually help save save money in, from the insurance companies. So I think that's largely where it's been driven, but it's also consumer driven, people asking for it. And much more with social media, people recognizing and knowing what their options are. Yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, you, you always learned that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so in that way, um, you're looking at what can be money that is invested in people's health and wellness today is something that um, can, it, it's not going to eliminate all future medical expenses, obviously, um, but it's going to be something that, that makes a huge difference um, in the future. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about um, when you're talking about why people go into medicine uh, I had the chance to talk to a group of nurse practitioners a little while ago, and my I gave them an exercise to do, and it was, while you are in school, write down why it is that you want to do this job. And take that and 
there's two options. One is paste it on your mirror so that every day when you go to work, you're reminded that this is why I started this and that you're going to fight with the system. You're going to have difficult clients. You're going to have all of these issues. But as long as you remember every day, uh, the other is take it and tuck it away somewhere safe. And one day when you are feeling frustrated with uh, you know, the number of shifts that you have had or you're feeling worn down, just to take that piece, of, uh, take that piece out and remind yourself, okay, yes, it's not as easy, uh, but here's why I started this and, and the work that I'm doing does make a difference. Uh, what is one thing that medical professionals can start doing today to improve the quality of healthcare? I think um, listening to their patients, as I said, listening to your and really trying to understand their goals and their needs um, and the context of their lives, you know, recognizing what's reasonable, what, what's possible for somebody to do um, is really important. And then educating themselves on what else is out there. You know, this piece about wellness that I'm talking about so that you don't have it be impossible to be an expert on everything, you know, for your doctor to also under know all the literature about example, again, acupuncture or yoga or these other things that are available, but to at least know about them and then refer your patients to, you know, other practitioners. Um, so that, and then talk to them. That's the other thing is to coordinate the care so that you have an opportunity to really work together for the, you know, that gets back to what I was saying with Rehab Without Walls is really a coordinated team of folks um, so that someone sees the whole big picture. I, I see that really lacking. When I used to work years ago in acute care, you'd get somebody who's in the hospital for a long time and they'd have the neurology would look at them and cardiology would look at them and, you know, gastroenterology, you know, if someone was really complex and there are all these services looking at somebody, but no one was looking at them all together. Yeah, so. that's a... And that's such an important thing. And I know when I was in rehab, there used to be, um, I, I don't know what the official title was, but there was, you know, like a team meeting about each individual patient um, at least once a week where PTOT, you know, physical medicine and rehab, any other of the, you know, psychology, everybody together would come and have a meeting about this particular patient in which every, everyone was contributing in that. And I think that that's, that's really a key. And when you leave the rehab setting, you don't, you know, no, there's no one necessarily out there that's, that's doing the coordination on that. And in your ideal world, would that be like a, a PCP or would it like, who would, who would you imagine as kind of the hub in the, the communication wheel? That's a good question. I do think it'd probably be the PCP or maybe even like a, in that, you know, some sort of case manager kind of person. But I, you know, I, I have people now that come to me for yoga and I have to admit, I don't always reach out to the PCP or to the other people. I don't, I wish sometimes, oh, I wish I could ask more questions, but they're hard to reach or, sure. you know, it's just, uh, there is no forum to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Listen, Carolyn, it has been wonderful to chat with you. Um, it, it does feel like old home week. And um, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, second of all, thank you for the amazing impact that you have had on my life um, uh, from being a part of my rehab from the very beginning. And uh, lastly, I just, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspective on healthcare. Thanks for listening to Perspectives on Healthcare. Visit PerspectivesOnHealthcare.com to learn more about Rob Oliver or to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If this podcast was valuable, we'd appreciate a review on iTunes. Or if you tell a friend or coworker about the show, that would be helpful too. Join us again next time for more Perspectives on Healthcare.